Hello, my name is Jeff A.G., Chairman and CEO of First Citizens National Bank. Here today, we're going to go over our First uh, Citizens Bank shares 930 2020 third quarter financial information for our shareholders. So you can see with this slide here, I wanted to start with something very strong and impactful. Our earnings per share through the first three quarters of 2020 is $4.11. You can see that number compared to last year being $3.38. That is a record third quarter earnings per share for us. And contingent on many factors, our fourth quarter should land at a record position also. Another barometer that's very impactful to our company is return on equity. You can see for 2020, our return on equity is 10%. That's compared to 9.5% in 2019. So some of the income sectors that have really added value in these challenging times this year, we'll hit a few of those in the non-interest income arena. First of all, a mortgage division. A mortgage division has produced $3.7 million in fee income through 930. Would not surprise me if we get close to five and a half million by 1231. This is a record position. Our mortgage division, we're so proud of them and what they've done in 2020. Also, another sector of our business that's really booming is the trust division. Our new leader, Andy Carter, and his team, they have exceeded $1 million, actually $1.1 million through the third quarter. We also had a gain on sale of uh, some of our securities we sold uh, and we had uh, realized gains right at a million dollars, actually $0.9 million pre-tax. Our insurance division year after year produces good stable revenues for this company, has for many years since the late 90s. As you can see $0.8 million uh, revenue has been produced by our insurance division. Asset quality is critical. I can tell you back in March 2020, we were worried about what could hit the third quarter of this year due to COVID and all the unique environment uh, conditions we were dealing with. And this is a barometer that shows the asset quality position at 930. This is probably one of the lowest positions, which is positive that we have ever seen in the history of First Citizens. It's our non-performing assets, which is the 90 days past due, plus the non-accrual loans. Pull those together, it's non-performing. You can see in 2020, 930, we were at 0.27%. Again, the lower, the better. Peers basically double that at 0.6. And last year at this time, we were 0.29. So a great move, two basis points, might not sound like a lot, but this was a record position last year. Spinning off asset quality, our loan portfolio with reserve for loan losses, we have invested a lot of our monies into our reserve this year. Just the unknown has really, if there's anything that keeps us up at night right now is the unknowns that could happen. Uh, there are so many positive things going on with our company, but we're worried about the future. Uh, if this uh, economy deteriorates from the COVID, uh, political reasons and others. So we are really preparing and being proactive with the reserve for loan losses. We have driven our reserve from 1.13% in June of this year, all the way up to 1.24%. And probably by year end this year, it will be approaching 1.3%, which is a very high reserve position. Not all banks are doing this, but we think this is the right thing to do. And uh, if the economy just spins off and there's no issues uh, going forward, we'll have a nice reserve and might not have to allocate uh, as much in 2020 through a bad debt expense. So some of our recognitions uh, cumulative this year, the buyer five-star rating, uh, United Way of West Tennessee, we're number two. That's 14 years we've been in the top three. Uh, ABA top 200, based off return on equity, we're number 141. It's 12 years in a row off return on equity, and that's based off uh, making money 
and net income, so it's very impactful. Uh, ABA's best banks to work for, we're number 52 this year. We've been on this list for many years. Usually we're a little better ranked than that. We slip just a little bit, so we're a little fired up and we're gonna get better at this and try to get that back down to a lower number. Seaford and Brew, best banks in the US. That's a weighted average type uh, evaluation. Uh, seven years in a row on that. Best, uh, the Bank Director Magazine, best balance scorecard. Uh, banks in the United States, number 78. A lot of impactful recognitions this year. Our total assets of the company, as you can see, going back uh, to 1923, you can see how we've stair-stepped every year. In 1970, we were 42 million. The year 2000, we were 726 million in assets. As of 930, 1 billion, 985 million. And as of today, we're back and forth hitting the 2 billion mark, probably will land at 2 billion or more by 1231 consistently. The dividends per share. Shareholders are very worried about dividends. This is what we call a sacred cow uh, in our bank, and it's very important to us. Our dividends per share through the first nine months is 90 cents, which is the 30 cents per quarter. And it's been that way for the last two years. And contingent on other variables, our special dividend at December should be intact. Our vision continues to be people-centered and unbelievably good. Uh, we love our teammates and customers, and shareholders, and the communities that we serve. We really try to execute on that and a lot of detailed actions feed into unbelievably good. Thank you.